Hey, Windows 11 came out. We should probably take a look at it and see if we should upgrade. Stay tuned. Man, I'm really late to the game on this one. So, I really dropped the ball on this release date. I didn't have a video ready, so we're doing it now. So we may be a couple weeks short, but you know, it's better late than never. Honestly, had a lot of time now to actually look at Windows 11 and get my real thoughts on it. And unfortunately, they're not all good, but they're not all bad either. Windows 11 isn't the worst operating system Microsoft has ever made, but it might not be the best either. In fact, ironically, this computer isn't even running Windows 11. It's just running a screenshot because this is a sixth generation i5 and unfortunately, that's not supported under Windows 11. I'm gonna show you the good things about Windows 11 and some of the bad things, at least the bad things that I've noticed so far. Unfortunately, not everything's great about Windows 11. There are a few things that kind of drove me nuts. And in fact, there's a few things that really ticked me off and I don't understand why Microsoft did it this way. But rather than talking about it, let's take a look in the operating system and I'll show you what I mean. The first thing that we're gonna look at is the obvious thing, the start menu. I'm sure you all know that the start menu in Windows 10 is in the middle of the screen. And to be honest with you, I have no idea why. It must just be a design choice from Microsoft that they just decided this is the way they wanted to do it. So what I typically do from the very beginning is move this over to the side. But I'll show you how to do that a little later in the video. What I wanted to look at today is just kind of the way that things are laid out, you know? The way the start menu is laid out is much different than the one in Windows 10. I'll go ahead and put a screenshot of the Windows 10 start menu up on the screen right now compared to this one so you can kind of see the differences. It is a pretty dramatic difference, honestly honestly. But what you have here is you have all your pinned apps up top. And then below that you have all the recommended apps. And this is also the area where you would have your programs that you've installed recently. So if you have a new program that you just installed, this is where you would find it. And then on top of that, you can actually go into the all apps button right here. And that will actually give you a list of all the applications that you have installed on the computer. So it's not all in one place like it used to be in Windows 10. Unfortunately, it's kind of broken up a little bit, but the start menu does look a little bit more mature than it did in the beta release of Windows 10. But at the same time, it kind of looks real close to the same too, but it does look a little bit more polished than it did before. Some of the things that I've noticed different with the release version that I can't remember were in the beta or not is the search field right here. If you click on the search field, it's essentially just a link. So if you click on it, all it does is open up the search so you can search like you would if you hit the search button. But that also means there's not much reason to have the search button at the bottom. And it just kind of takes up space. The other thing too is that down at the bottom right here, you can actually pin different folders just like you would be able to in Windows 10 on the left hand side. Now it's over across the bottom. And to change these, all you have to do is right click and you can actually come up to personalize this list and you can change which folders are actually pinned. So if you wanted to pin something different, you could. I typically have settings in File Explorer on. Unfortunately, this is one of the complaints that I actually have with Windows 10 coming this quick in the video already, is that when you actually first install it, nothing is pinned here. So because nothing is pinned here, you can't actually right click and hit personalize this list. So what you would have to do is go into settings and actually go into it manually. You would have to search start menu and then from there you click on start settings and then from here you would go down to folders and here's where you would find it where you could actually turn things on or off and honestly I think that's a little annoying. It would be really nice if you could actually get to that window by right clicking anywhere on this bottom section of the start menu right here instead of having to click over the icons there. But you know, hopefully that's something Microsoft will change in the future. It might have just been an oversight or it may be by design, who knows? And then the next thing I wanted to look at is the obvious taskbar. It hasn't necessarily changed as much as it's just different. It doesn't actually, one of the things that I noticed with the taskbar is with Windows, the taskbar has always been a part of the operating system, but it doesn't seem like part of the operating system anymore. It seems more like it's a separate app. For instance, when you right click on it, 
it doesn't give you all of the options that you had before. All you can go to is taskbar settings. And consequently, that's where you would go to fix some of the things that are actually wrong with the taskbar, in my opinion. For instance, I usually turn all of this stuff off right here. And this is where you can do it from the taskbar settings. Also, if you go down to taskbar behavior, you can actually change what the taskbar alignment is. So from this point, you can actually set it to the left like you would with traditional versions of Windows to make it a little bit more useful. Because honestly, I'm not used to going to the middle of the screen to hit my start button. I'm sorry, Microsoft. I know you want it in the middle, but I don't. So I'm glad you left the taskbar alignment setting in here. It's definitely helpful. But one of the downsides of having the taskbar operate like a separate app is you don't have your access to the different tools that you had available to you by right clicking on the taskbar. For instance, the task manager. However, you still can hit control shift escape to open the task manager, as well as if you right click on the start button, you can get to the task manager that way as well. So it's essentially just gonna be a muscle memory thing that we're just gonna have to learn how to deal with because I don't know that they're gonna give the functionality back in the taskbar itself, but it would be nice if they did. And then if we go all the way over to the other side right here, we can look at where the notifications are on the taskbar. So if we click on that, the notifications, I think, look a lot more grown up than they did in Windows 10. I think this is a much nicer way of laying this out, even though I usually turn all the notifications off anyway. But it is a, not, a lot nicer seeing it the way that it's set up right now. And you have one button and you can get rid of them all if you wanted to. However, with that said, one of the other downsides with the taskbar is it can't actually be moved. You can't take the taskbar and move it over to the right or the top or the left of the screen because Microsoft has essentially left the taskbar stationary at the bottom of the screen. So I've heard a lot of people complain about the taskbar location and honestly it doesn't really affect me that much because I don't personally move my taskbar. I always leave it at the bottom of the screen. However, some people really do like to change the position of the taskbar and for those people unfortunately you're either going to have to get used to the way that Windows 10 does it or maybe there'll be a taskbar replacement at some point. The fact that it feels like a separate app means that might actually be a really big likelihood but who knows we'll have to wait and see. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at real quick is we're gonna go ahead and open up the File Explorer. The first thing you notice right off the bat is that the icons have changed. In fact, the icons have actually changed quite a bit. They're a lot more colorful and a lot more Linux-like at this point, which is fine. You know, if Microsoft wanted to make the icons more colorful, then great, that's awesome. However, some of the other things that you notice is if you actually look at the edge of the screen, you can see that the corners are actually round now, which honestly, I think is a pretty neat effect. I like it personally. And it's one of those things to where it's definitely completely aesthetic, but I think it looks really nice. However, with that said, there is a change that Microsoft has made recently with Explorer that is just absolutely the most annoying thing I've ever seen in my life, and that's the right-click menu. If you actually open up, let's open up a folder here, and if we go to right-click on something, you'll see this new menu that comes up, which they've tried to organize things differently and make the menu, I'm assuming they're trying to make the menu more usable. Unfortunately, to people that are used to the right-click menu, this couldn't be further from the truth. This is the most annoying thing ever. In fact, when I wanna rename or delete something, I've actually gotten to the point to where I have to mouse over and see, well, which one's rename? Okay, well, that one's rename. And this one here is share. It, it doesn't make any sense. Why don't you just put it in the menu like it was before? However, the nice thing is, is you can can actually go to show more options and you can get the original menu still like you used to be able to get. However, there used to be a little hack that you could do with the registry that would completely eliminate this new right-click menu and it would give you back your old one. Unfortunately, when I was doing research for this video, that hack doesn't work anymore. So I'm gonna have to look around and see if I can find another way to do it. And if there does come up to be another way to be able to change your right menu back, I'll make a video on it so you guys can know how to do it too. But anyway, it's probably one of the most annoying things I've seen so far, but there is one more thing that's even worse than that. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, another thing too is, is I think Microsoft just assumes that everyone using Windows 11 is gonna be using a touchscreen. And because of that, they've actually spaced everything out quite a bit. And it's so your fingers can be a little bit more precise while it's clicking on things. 
However, it's actually kind of annoying. So one way you can actually change this is if you go up to view, you can actually change it to compact view and it'll kind of squish everything back together so it looks more like the way that Windows 10 did it. So while we're in Explorer here, let me show you another neat little thing and I covered this in my last video and I still like it, but it's your actual pin settings that you have over here where you can actually choose where something is gonna be pinned on the screen. So if you have multiple apps open, so let's go ahead and open up another file explorer window. If you go over here to your pin settings, you can actually choose where on the screen you want the application to actually be pinned. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this one over to the right hand side, and then you can click your other application to open it in that one. However, if you wanted to change this up a little bit, you could go over here and say you wanted to pin it on the top and then pin something else on the bottom. This is actually kind of neat. I like the fact that they did this. And like always, you could just grab the top taskbar and drag it off, and then it'll bring it back to the original size it was before you pinned it. And then while we're in this section looking at some of the Explorer windows, some of the animations that Microsoft has brought into Windows are actually kind of nice. The way that applications maximize and minimize and kind of the interaction between the mouse clicks and the icons themselves are actually kind of neat. Let me show you a couple examples. If you come down here and you actually click on the start menu, you can see the start menu kind of shrink and grow as it's going up and down. However, there is a couple other things. Let me, let me pull up let me re-enable the search real quick so we can get the search icon back. And if you actually look at the search icon, when you click on it, it actually changes colors completely in its animation. Microsoft definitely went through and they spent a lot of time changing just little subtle animations within the operating system to make the operating system look more polished. And honestly, it really does look more polished. The animations are a really nice touch and it's gotta be one of the things I gotta give Microsoft credit for. They really did make Windows 11 look great. Now this does come out to be kind of a subjective subject, but personally, I think Windows 11 looks way better than Windows 10. However, let's look at some of the other bad things that we were talking about. Okay, so some of the things that kind of drive me nuts, go ahead and close some of these right here, and I'm gonna open up Chrome. And Chrome, oh, Chrome isn't set to default. Well. That's easily resolved. We'll just hit the set default button, right? Well, now where's browsers? They're not here. Unfortunately, Microsoft has completely changed the way that your defaults work. And if you wanna make Chrome your default browser, you would have to actually go down to Chrome, click on it, and then you would have to go through this entire list and set every one of these things to Chrome. So it's a matter of clicking on it, picking Chrome, hitting okay. Clicking on it, picking Chrome, hitting okay clicking on it, picking Chrome, clicking OK. Are you kidding, Microsoft? Everyone? It, but, but wait, it gets better. Let me show you this. So we're gonna go click over here, click on Edge, and now Edge obviously is not our default browser anymore because we went through that entire list and we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click on the little three dots, we're gonna go down to settings, and then we're gonna click on default browser. Well, we can make Edge default. And I'm sure when we click that button, we're gonna to have to go through the same process, right? Well, let's see what happens. So we're gonna click on make default. Oh, wait a second. So, you can make Edge the default browser by just clicking the button, but Chrome, it takes 10 minutes to go through an entire list and change every different specific file type. Really, Microsoft? Really? <laughs> okay, now, that right there, honestly, at this point, is the most annoying thing I've seen with Windows 10 so far. Let's move into a subject that's not as frustrating as default browsers. So if we come down here, let's go ahead and look at Windows 10 settings. So if we open up settings, as you can see, settings has changed a lot from Windows 10, and it's even changed considerably from the Windows 10 beta, considering the Windows 10 beta essentially just used the Windows 10 version of settings. However, it does give you a little bit more organized way of looking at things, and I've actually found this to be a little bit easier to maneuver. So if we go into personalization, we can actually click here, we can set different colors and things of that nature. We can change the way the operating system looks and it's all under one menu on the side under personalization. And then depending on which route you want to go, you can change any kind of personalization 
setting from within this section of the settings. So if we wanted to change the color, let's say we wanted to have light and dark theme, then we can do that and it's all under the section personalization. Now if you wanted to change a setting related to the network, then you could click on network and internet and it's all organized within network and internet. Now this isn't too much different than the way that Windows 10 settings work. However, the way they organized it, I think is a little bit better because to be honest with you, the way Windows 10 did it, I thought it was kind of a little Fisher Price. You know, you know, it seemed like it was dumbed down too much and at that point it was just annoying using settings in Windows 10 because a lot of the times the more advanced settings were either hard to get to or weren't available at all and fortunately they have a lot more of the advanced settings within Windows 11 settings but there's still a lot of reason to have to go into control panel so it looks like control panel is gonna be with us for a while. And honestly, I kinda of like that because being that I'm so much more used to control panel than I am Windows settings, I usually go there by default anyway. In fact, sometimes I'm kind of annoyed when they have moved functionality from control panel to settings, but you know, you get used to it after a while. But let's move on to the next thing. All right, so while we're in settings, let's go look at update. And this is another thing that I think is actually kind of annoying. Essentially, all it does is it's actually broken updates into essentially your critical updates, kind of the way that Windows 7 was. And when it comes to optional updates, it's a little bit difficult to find, but you have to actually go into advanced options. Then you have to click on optional updates and you have to actually do these manually. These will be like your different driver updates and things of that nature that will all be kind of stuck into optional updates. And if you don't know you have any optional updates available, you might not know to actually go look for them. And it was a little annoying to me at first when I realized that most of the drivers that didn't install originally, they didn't install because they were all sitting in optional updates. So once I was able to go through that and get those installed, it was fine, but it would have been nice to actually have a link to optional updates from the homepage so you didn't have to actually go into advanced and actually try to find where they're located at. But you know, it is what it is. So that's just a short overview of what to expect with Windows 11. It's definitely changed a lot from Windows 10, but honestly, it still comes down to a fresh coat of paint. A lot of the core operating system is still Windows 10, and it just kind of has a more refreshed look. I actually really like the way Windows 11 looks, but unfortunately, there's a lot of bad things about Windows 11 too. Some of them are bugs, some of them I think are by design. Like for instance, the default browsers, I'm sorry Microsoft, but I know you did that on purpose and you need to change it. It's just wrong. But I do hear that Mozilla is actually working on a way to be able to change defaults with a single click and hopefully Chrome will get that soon too. So that'll be nice to be able to change browsers on a single click now instead of having to go into settings. It's definitely something that we've been missing for a long time. The other thing is, is hardware support. Unfortunately, I installed Windows 11 on an unsupported system. In fact, I found a system that literally failed on every topic when it came to hardware support. But I did get it installed and it did run. However, it didn't run great. There was a lot of functionality of Windows that were missing and I honestly think this was by design. I think Microsoft is serious when they say these systems aren't supported. And why are they not supported? You know, I don't know. Personally, I think it's financial. I think Microsoft wants to help boost the sales for their third-party OEM partners. And, you know, like this system, for instance, this Microsoft Surface is a sixth generation i5, and this is perfectly capable of running Windows 11. Unfortunately, it's left out because it has an older processor. You know, it might make sales for Surfaces go up, and I think that's the only reason they're doing it. I hope I'm wrong, but I really think that's what it is. But when it comes down to systems that are in support, should you upgrade to Windows 11? Personally, right now, I wouldn't recommend upgrading. And the reason is, is because for one, there really is a lot of bugs right now. For instance, I had, you know, a lot of random freezes just here and there while I've been using this system here, as well as just 
really bizarre bugs. Like for instance, the colors of the icons change dynamically with the theme that you're using. So if you're using a dark Windows theme, the icons will be light. And if you're using a light Windows theme, the icons will all be dark. But I actually had some instances where I would change from a light to a dark theme and the icons wouldn't change. So they would just blend into the taskbar and they were really hard to see. And that's obviously a bug and hopefully it's something that'll get fixed soon. But there's other things like the default browser issue that honestly, I don't think are bugs. I think they're by design. And hopefully third party people will be able to fix that in the future. There's also features in Windows 11 that are simply not available right now. For instance, Windows 11 is supposed to come with the support to be able to run Android apps. And that just doesn't work yet. Also, there's direct storage in games, which mimics the way that Xbox handles NVMe drives. And that's not only not available in Windows yet, but they, we don't even have any games that support it yet. So we're gonna have to wait into the future to find out how that works out. So honestly, right now, I think unless you have to upgrade to Windows 11 for some reason, like if you buy a new computer that comes with it, I would hold off. Windows 10 is still gonna be in support until October of 2025. So we have four years still of Windows 10 being under support. And you know, if Microsoft doesn't change their tune when it comes to hardware requirements, hopefully it will stick around for a little bit longer or we'll have better ways to be able to run unsupported hardware on Windows 11. Either way, the community will definitely figure that problem out when the time comes. However, if this was helpful to you, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.